Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Ami's World. And that's right, I'm Ami. Today, I am moving on with our story, Izzy and Stamps, and we are on Journal 4. So, we're going to start with July 6th, 1963. And for those of you who are just joining us, Kizzy and Stamps is a little girl who was going to a new integrated school, um, and she had suffered a severe accident, which cut her face from her eye down to her lip. And now she is faced with going to this new school with this new scar and with these new students that she thinks may not accept her. Okay, let's get started. Miss Anderson, I'm sorry you've never had a dog. What a disappointment for you that your father had allergies. If you would like some time, you can meet my shack, if you want to. It isn't the same as having your own, of course, but I'm glad you had Mr. Boxster, even though turtles aren't as good as dogs. James had a turtle once, but I dropped him and he died. I didn't mean to, but when I picked him up, he kept moving his legs, and I felt so nasty the way his legs felt against my fingers, so I let it go. Even though I was only three, he fell from my eyeball height to the floor. That isn't any small potato height when you're a turtle. I guess I suppose his little innards couldn't take the drop, and we buried him. So now you won't be surprised when you meet me. I've told you just about everything there is to tell. I think my scar is sizable, I suppose. People do stare, and it itches plenty when the weather is socks in. Mama calls me her moon child because the scar is shaped like a crescent moon. Sometimes when people hear Mama call me that, they look askance, like they think that it's horrible, but I think it's special. It seems like a bond between us. Somehow that she turned what many people would think is my tragedy into a special name between the two of us. I admit though, I don't like it when folks stare. Most of the folks around here know me and have seen the scar. So you think that that would just be that, but scars on your face seem to be hard to turn away from. Feel hot when we're staring and I can't keep my eyes from turning down to the ground. I get mad at myself for looking down. What do I have to look down about? Why do I have to feel ashamed? I was doing honest work. It wasn't my fault that Frank Charles hit my arm. It wasn't my fault that I was being neighborly to a family that doesn't even help mine. That old Mr. Feagans is too mean to help black people, but takes help from anybody when his crops need pulling up. It wasn't my fault. What will probably be harder for you to turn away from more than my scar is the attitude I have. The one that Miss Warren says needs serious adjustment. She has been my one and only teacher so far, but I figure you will find me as trying as she does. When I came to your our schoolhouse, I was six years old and tiny. Miss Warren explained to us that in your school, you have actual classrooms for different grades. We just have one room, so everybody is in the same room. Miss Warren put me in the front row where everybody starts, and then you move back by rows, depending on how smart you show yourself to be, or how smart, how much you know. So you can have older kids sitting in the front row with the littlest kids. It doesn't matter. It took me half a day to get my rightful place two rows back, even if I was only six years old. I knew letters and numbers. I read everything I could get my hands on. And I could add, subtract, and read parts of the Bible, including several songs. I can do all the songs now, but some of those words are killers when you just start to read. King David knew some powerful, complicated words, I admit. That Bible is pretty much the only book in my house because of my granny bits. And there's lots of times when I'm bitten by the reading bug. So you see why I could already read whole parts of the Bible when I started school. Of course, it wasn't an hour into the day when I sent out to get my first switch. I'd be done with all that with Miss Warren. She wouldn't allow it. I'd interrupt her and ask her why. <laughs> Even back then at six, I could tell that a part of Miss Warren was downright excited to have a student ask anything. But she had 42 students on days when everybody came and she would have an order in her classroom, let me tell you. So you didn't interrupt. And if you had questions, you had an option, write them down to ask her later or to look them up yourself. She really wanted you to do it yourself. I do look things up. I really like to find stuff out for myself, but there are times when I don't want to. I want to know. I want to know now. We didn't have reference books in our classroom. 
Do you have reference books in your room? Maybe even those encyclopedias? I love encyclopedias. You can learn all manner of stuff, collect right in one place. That could be one good thing about integrated schools, if I could see and use some reference books in class. For now, I'll go to Miss Ann Spencer's library near downtown Lynchburg. I know I told you she was a poet. She must love words of plenty, writing them, reading them, and surrounding herself with them in every way. Only white folks could use the city library. Well, of course, you know that. But it bears saying, because what I'm going to say next is so amazing, Miss Ann, but we call her Miss Annie, as a sign of respect, even though she's married and has children, has been inside the white library once. I don't know if she was allowed in somehow or she just sneaked. And she says it's a building full of light books and notebooks. Her family's house, which is where our library is located, is dark in the rooms where she sleeps with the books. So they stay in a good shape for longer. She has her life going on and in that house amid the books, it's a busy place. A tumble of life and knowledge and fun and facts. So that may not be light, but it's a place of books and knowing. And I'd like the light though. So, what did you get from that part of the story? Um, did you realize that um, Kizzy started talking a little bit more about the differences between the African American library and the Caucasian library and what they had that was different than their children? She even mentioned um, their location. I don't know if you caught that. Where uh, was the library? Downtown in what city? Um, also, uh, what did you notice about the black librarian? Something that she had to do in order to get a glimpse of what a library looked like. It's pretty interesting um, with these days and times that we don't have to worry about that as much. We can go in and out of places without being asked to leave. But in this time, they had to get permission or they had to look for signs on the doors or the windows that would let you know whether or not they were permitted to um, come inside. So that's pretty interesting. Such a difference um, from then to now. The other thing is Kizzy really seems to be getting more comfortable with Miss uh, Warren. Actually, I'm sorry, is it Ms. Anderson? She's asking her kinds of questions. She's even offering to let her see her dog, Shag. She's telling her stories about things that happened to her in her childhood. She's even talking about uh, sweet pet names that her mother calls her. So tell me what your thoughts are. Um, I hope you're enjoying Kizzy and uh, Stamps. I think we're gonna learn a lot from this little girl. Okay, have a great day. And remember for all your homeschool and virtual learning needs, stop here and see Ami right here at Ami's World. Bye-bye.